I'll show you how to set up your automated UI tests to be run outside your IDE. The following instructions can be used if you want to set up your tests to be run in a build server such as Jenkins. Here we have the simple tutorial application from vadin.com slash tutorial. We have written a simple test case having a single test. Clicking the add new customer button should bring the customer form visible. Let's use Maven failsafe plugin to run the test in Maven's verify phase. The plugin executes integration test goal, which runs the tests, and a verify goal, which verifies the test results. Let's try it out as we have the application server already running. Execute Maven verify phase. As you can see, the tests are run. The failsafe plugin finds our test class because we have the letters IT in the class name. We can do better than manually starting application server and running the tests. Let's configure the Maven Jedi plugin to start and stop the server for testing during the build. We declare two executions. First, executing a Jedi start goal in pre-integration test phase. And then executing Jedi stop goal in the post-integration test phase. Let's run the tests again. This is already a good start for automating the integration tests. But to run them properly in a build machine, we need to run the tests without the need for a visible browser. For this, we can use PhantomJS. You can download it from phantomjs.org. Follow installation instructions on their page. After PhantomJS is installed, we can switch from Firefox driver to a driver for PhantomJS. Other than that, we don't need to change our tests. Let's run the verify phase again to see, or actually in this case, not to see our test to be run. So far so good. But we need just a couple of tweaks to make this even smoother. We probably want to see the tests run when we are developing or debugging the tests. To avoid manually switching the driver in the test code, we can utilize Maven profiles. Let's define two profiles. A profile called dev, which is activated by default, and a profile called test. In the dev profile, we define a property called test.headless and set it false. In the test profile, we set the same property true. Now we want to expose our newly created property to our test classes. To achieve this, we define test resource directory and set its files to be filtered. Then we create a property file to that directory. There we have our property with the placeholder value. This placeholder gets replaced in the build with the real value based on the selected profile. Next, we'll use a helper class for reading this property value. This helper selects either the Firefox driver or PhantomJS driver based on the value of the test headless property. Now we only need to change the test class to use our utility class instead of the hard-coded driver. And then run our test using the test profile. Thanks for watching. You can get the sample code used in this video following the GitHub link in the video description.